Well, programming may be difficult for some people, but it can be fun for everyone. So to show you the playful side of computer programming, we're going to look finally at a new programming language called RCX Code Language. It's what you use to write programs for the new LEGO Mindstorms robots. You've got the great job, Chris, of playing with these things. And let's try to explain what we're talking about here to people. In the old days, if I would build a LEGO, I put a motor in it, it just runs, right? There's no intelligence. That's right. It, it was easy to make really simple actions like uh, this that I've added here. Go, but then it would yeah, go off the crash. edge. Okay. All right, now I want to write a program that says to this thing, if you see an edge coming, stop. Right. How do I do that using RCX? So if I switch to a smarter program here, um, what I've done is added, I, I have some sensors built into this. Let's explain what you're talking about there. This is one of your sensors, right? And that's right. a button, and, and that I, gets pressed, and that sends a message, if I would hook this up, sends a message to the computer. Exactly. And those arms, when they fall, press that button. That's right. Okay. So what this program does is uh, notices that it reaches the edge and does something about it. When sensor gets hit, stop. Right. Okay. Let's watch it go. Just in case. Hey, all right. Okay. Now, we're talking about programming. How did you write that in the RCX code language? Well, here's that program on the screen. And you notice that um, the RCX code programming environment is very different from your standard textual right. programming Right. So each language. one of these kind of jigsaw puzzle pieces is, is an action. That's right. These are little commands, and you string them together to form to a program. Create, right, which is what a program is, That's of course. Right. So this program here um, says, first set the speed of the motors. Right then uh, set the direction of the motors, and, and turn finally on. turn them on. So start right. moving the vehicle so forward. So we want to say when sensor goes off, stop motor, right? That's right. So then I've added these two blue blocks here. They're called um, touch sensor watchers, okay. one for each arm on the, on the invention. Got it. So you've got two sensors on here. And right. you want to say if either of those sensors go off, stop? That's right. So what I added at the end here um, was a command that t told the motors to turn off. Okay. So if either uh, the touch sensor is pressed, I have the motors turn off. Okay. So can you change to that program in there and try this? Well, we just ran it. So oh, that, that's right. That, we actually did that one. Yeah. Stop. Okay. But, fair uh, enough. Maybe we want to do something more interesting, like yeah. have it back up. Okay. So now we want to rewrite the program and say, if you see an edge, stop, and then start to go backwards. Yeah. How do you write that? Okay. So um, on the left here is a menu of um, all kinds of different uh, commands that I can use. These affect the motors. I have sensor watchers here that let me uh, detect light okay. and, and uh, touch, and then I have ways of repeating commands and branching on different Now, commands. Chris, this looks kind of baby-like, but these are the fundamental concepts of programming, right? That's right. It has looping, branching, iteration. All the same stuff. It's just in a simple visual uh, way to deal with it. Right. All right, so let's write that program. So I scroll down here to uh, the reverse direction command mm -hmm. and add that to both touch sensor washers, and then scroll up to the command that's going to turn the motors back on again. Okay, change the direction of the motor, turn the motor back on if either sensor exactly. gets a message. So let's see what happens now. So I can put this program in by uh, clicking download. So you got a little IR port here that sends the new code into the computer. That's right. Uh, we didn't want to have wires attached to, the, to our sure. invention so they can now roam around freely. Um, so we send it by infrared. Okay. Just take a second here for the program to go in. Okay. I hear a little beep, so maybe it's happy. So now it should see the edge, stop, and go backwards. Let's try it. Stop. All right. We wrote right. a program. Yep. Last one, there's something a little more complicated in which you have an avoidance program, in which it says, if you see an edge, just try another path. I mean, don't go that way, right? Right. Um, let me just load that in real quick. Um, this gives you an idea of some of the potential, uh, potentially pretty sophisticated things you can do with mm -hmm. RCX code. And you'll notice that on the screen here, what, what you see is a longer stack of commands under each of these touch sensor watchers. Right. Now, I don't want to go into detail about what um, each of those stacks do. But you do. can write a long program here to tell us to do a lot. I mean, I've seen some of these things that are shooting baskets and dealing cards. That's and right. All kinds of things. That's right. So let me. I'm just all right. So ahead. see if we can run that program. I'm go ahead and switch directly to that instead of downloading. Okay, but it's so in now memory. Explain what it's, what it's been told to do now. Okay. So what this program is going to do is when it detects an edge. Um, back up and then change direction and then go and forward. Look for again. another path that might not have an edge. That's right. Okay, so let's see what happens. That work? There ah, okay, okay. And we can see either one falls down and that sets that thing off. Right. That is cool. And we might point out that Lego sounds like kids, but it's mostly grown ups that are playing with this thing, right? Oh, that's right. <laughs> I guess uh, about 50% of the users right. now are adults. Chris, thank you very much.